Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of our Photoshop daily creative challenge. I can't believe it's day three already. Amazing. I want to give a shout out to some people in the chat. We've got Aria hanging out. Aria, what's up? It's been nice chatting with you on Slack. We've got nice Dicey or DC's first time today. So that's awesome. Thanks for being here, DC. Anna, Sarah, we had someone watching from Montana today too. Super cool. Let us know where you're watching from. Ludwig is in Belgium. Very cool. Is it like dinner time? What do you have? Let us know. Nadine from Michigan. Hello, Roman. Hi. Good to have you all. If you don't know me already, I am Kathleen Martin and I am usually here for Adobe Live hosting awesome designers. But for the next uh, about week and a half, I'm going to be hosting this Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I'm also a designer on the Adobe Studio team focusing on educational content, YouTube videos, those kind of cool things. So I'm really excited to be hanging out with all of you for the next week and a half. Very cool. Justin says it's my first stream and not a replay. Welcome, Justin. This is live. That's so cool. Thanks for hanging out with us. Siobhan in Ireland. What's up, Siobhan? Cynthia in Calgary. Heard it was cold today. Heard it was pretty cold. Alexandra in Snowmaha. Snowmaha, Nebraska. Very awesome. So if you are just joining us for the first time, like a few of you are, I want to introduce the daily creative challenge to you super quick so you know what is up and what's going on. Uh, this is a two week challenge where every day we're going to provide you with a different theme, a different project for you to really sharpen your Photoshop skills. This is really beginner friendly. So we're starting off super simple, like we've done blending modes, layers. Today, as you know, we're going to work with templates in Photoshop. And as the weeks progress, things might get a little more complex. We're going to learn some cool uh, techniques that you can just build upon and layer into your work. Very cool. By the end of the next uh, week, you are going to be feeling really confident about your skills. You're going to have an awesome portfolio piece because we're going to be uploading everything to Behance, which I will show you at the end of the stream. Um, and you're also going to have a cool community. We're always here, always chatting. We do have Adobe Live going on this week as well. So today's the last day of that. It's been Graphic Design Week. So after me at 9 a.m. Pacific time, uh, Ari and Andrew will be back with their cool graphic design stuff, followed by the Hood Sisters of Hoodspa Design. They are awesome. And then Christina Cox and Amelia will be finishing out the day. So if you want your portfolio to potentially get reviewed, make sure you stick around for that. Really, really awesome. And then I'll be back tomorrow with another challenge. Very cool. What's up, Eric? Good to have you. Eric, is this your first time joining the DCC? I don't think I've seen you the last two days. That's awesome. I know, Aria, the live streams are awesome. All right, so if you do want to be a part of this daily creative challenge, uh, you can go to behance.net slash daily creative challenge. You can register. Uh, make sure you tune in for the live streams every day, which is what this is. We're going to be sharing our work on Behance. And another way that you can share your work is to be joining us on Slack. If you don't know what Slack is, it's an awesome community where you can chat with people, ask your questions. I'll open this up. Let's see. Who do we have in introductions today? A lot of people. We've got Julie, 93 East. I'll say hello to everyone. Hello. So come over, join us. Uh, you can post your work to get feedback. We've had amazing people posting all of their work for the last two days. Asking for critique, getting critique, giving critique, very helpful. And then every day, the challenges will also be announced here at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. Pacific. And you can see there's a lot of reactions to these posts. Super cool. So please join us there. That would be awesome. I'll just go to my Behance profile super quick so you can see that we are, like I said, uploading these to Behance. This is my project so far. Yours probably look pretty similar. These are from the last two days. And then we are using the keyword PS Daily Challenge so that when we search for each other, let's see if I can find it in my tabs. There we go. When we search PS Daily Challenge, we can see everyone's work. Awesome. Ryan, hello from Oklahoma. What's up, Morel? Super cool to be back. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> cool. Okay, so like I said, today is templates. And if you've never used templates before in Photoshop, it's a really awesome way to kind of bump your work up to the next level. If you've ever seen someone's design mocked up like on a poster or maybe on a mug, 
maybe on a book cover, which is what we're going to be doing today. You might have wondered, how do they do this? Do they take the photography themselves? Does it require a lot of a nitty gritty detail and fine work? No, super easy. We provided the download file for you, and this is what it looks like when you open it in Photoshop. But if you would like to find more templates in Photoshop, and you are making a new document, so I'm just in my new document window. If you come over here to the tabs, see we have photo, print, art and illustration. When you select one, it'll provide you with some presets for sizing for your document. But also, if you scroll down, you will see some free templates, which is really helpful. And check it out. This is the one that we're going to be using today. But as you see, there's a million other ones. You could do an entire party stationery. Uh, this one's very cool. Enamel pin mock-ups. En enamel pins are so hot right now. So this is a good way to kind of make your proof of concept. Really simple poster design. Awesome. And if you are having a hard time downloading this and opening it, maybe it says it's not the um, a correct file type, let me show you how you might go about uh, opening it. So let's see, we're in day three. So you might download it and it might be a PSD T file, which means it's a template file. If it's not opening for you, just drag it down to Photoshop and open it that way. Super easy. All right, let's do this. Ande says, Gen genuinely never looked at the free templates in Photoshop. I always troll Google. Feel a bit blind now. They're here for you. You're not blind. We, we saw that people were trying to uh, find templates and didn't know where to find them. So we thought might as well just plop them right in Photoshop. Okay, so as you see, there's already a book cover on this template. And if we come over here to the layers, which is what we were playing with yesterday, if you remember, you'll see that there's book one, book two, download, or background. And then if you twirl this arrow down, a bunch of things open up. You see a layer that says your image here, front cover blank, you see even more groups. So this template is very highly customizable. You'll also notice that in some of these uh, layers, there is this icon here. And this means that this layer is a smart object. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but it's super helpful, it makes your life a lot easier. Oh, Anthony can't participate because you're at work. I know, I'm excited to see what you all come up with too. Is the second book the back of the book? Yes, so the second book is talking about this, which is just the same book, but flipped around, if that's helpful. <laughs> Did I match my outfit to the template on purpose? Justin, what do you think? No, <laughs> is the answer. I'm not that forward thinking. I wish I did though. All right, so if we all have this template file open, hopefully we do. I'm going to double click into this layer that says your image here. We're in book one and we've got your image here. Double click on it and that's gonna take you into the smart object. We are now in smart object land and you'll notice that this is its own Photoshop document. It already has its own layers in here. It has a background color, has a border. It already has text laid out for you. And say I were to change this text, I'm just clicking on it and I'm gonna uh, type, let's see, Dante's Divine Comedy, because that's a good book, right? I'm gonna maybe move it a little bit around. This is kind of an avant-garde design for an older book. So say I have this, I'm gonna commit the changes. I'm gonna do Command S to save. And let's make sure that, cool, we're saving that. And then when I go back to our template, look, it says Dante's Divine Comedy. That's what a smart object is. When you jump into it, you make a change and you save it, it's automatically linked and will update in your template. So really, really helpful for you to be able to make changes on the fly, tweaks, without having to rebuild your entire mock-up every time. I know, it's very modern typography, isn't it, Dee? I didn't design it, the template did all the work for me. <laughs> Divine Comedy is also a good band, but that's very different. Ande, what kind of band is it? I'm picturing like, death metal, perhaps? Let me know, maybe ska? 
Nathaniel says, after learning how to work with layers, life has never been the same. Really? Just from yesterday? No way. That's amazing. All right, let's double click back into here or we also have the file still open. You'll notice that all of this text is completely editable. I could change the foreground color if we open up the properties window. You'll see that the foreground color is set to black, but maybe we want it to be white. Probably not. How about blue? Perchance. This kind of looks like a National Geographic, I think. Very interesting brand for Dante's Divine Comedy. Maybe red. That could be fun. Layer goals. I know this is so well organized. Whoever designed this template, you rock. So maybe we'll go to black here. Kind of feels like a propaganda poster. And if I were to go Command S or File Save, it's changed. Super easy. What's up, Chatan? Hello from Nepal. Amazing. Oh, it's a comedy band on day. I wish it was heavy metal. Maybe they'll do a heavy metal uh, cover, like a book cover. Okay. So let's jump back into our main template file. Let's kind of dig into these details, the highlights. You'll notice if I turn this on and off, you'll notice that this area changes because there is a highlight here. Turning it on and off, boom, boom. Maybe the shadow, turn it on and off. It's really customizable to how you want this to be. Do you want it to be more realistic? You want it to look more flat and graphic? What's up, Marcine? Eloisa? Now the book looks different. I know, they're different books now. So we'll have to jump into maybe our book number two. Double click into our smart object and change the colors around to match. Let's write this. Let's see, we have Inferno. That's the first book. Purgatory, second one. Paradise, there we go. What's so funny about that? Save it. Boom, updated. Now maybe we wanna change this to white because the copy is white on the cover. Let's double click back in. We can select our type. We could even make it a little bit bigger. Change the color to white. Now you'll notice I'm going through editing type pretty quickly. And if you're totally new to Photoshop, you might be like, well, hold on, slow down. Um, but just for now, stick in there since these are already set up for you. And we're gonna maybe talk about text in a future show. So you're gonna have to come back for that. Eloisa, I'm so glad that you're liking it. It's great. All right, let's save, jump back in. There we go, it's updated. Now I'm noticing on this back book, that the back is still yellow, which is not what we want. So you can jump in here. You can change the colors as you see fit. Check that out. I'm going down to the front cover of the back book, which is kind of confusing. I'm double clicking on this layer fill and I'm just selecting the red that is from the cover. And you'll see that it changes the color right here. So I'll change it back to yellow so you can uh, see what I mean. Now it's yellow, you'll notice here. Now it's red. Isn't this amazing? This is what I mean by these templates make your life so easy. It seems complex and there's a lot of custom ability, but it's not. It's pretty much laid out there for you. Welcome Lisa, what's up Owen? I love the shadow on the second book. I know, Aria, it's really nice and really realistic. So you can go ahead and you can play with these as you see fit. You can just work with this typography-based design, or you can make something that is totally your own. You'll notice in the um, challenge for today, the, the cover and the back look a little different because I did uh, design them totally, again, all for my own purposes. So here is my Dante's Divine Comedy. I just grabbed an image from stock of like a statue's hand. I took the background out and then I just dropped in some circles and using the blend modes that we've been using the last two days, it created this cool kind of pattern that symbolizes the three books of the comedy. 
So from there, I can jump into my smart object. I'm going to place embedded the file that I have already created. Let's place it. I'm going to commit the changes by pressing enter, turn off all the other layers, file save to update it, and there you go. Totally done. Let's do it again for the back. We're going to be double clicking into our back book on the file that says your image here. Double click. Let's place embedded. So I really, really recommend and highly suggest that you work on maybe designing your own cover. You can use blend modes and simple shapes, make a very simple design, and then put it into this template. And I can't wait to see what you all do. Boom, let's change the back color. Someone yesterday was saying, I like how you say boom every time you do something. It makes me feel powerful, like the Photoshop mage that I am. All right, last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this background. As you can see, it's already fully editable for me. I'm just gonna change the gradient. Remember how we edited the gradient the first day? Pretty cool. You could do that. You could even make your own gradient by using the gradient tool that we used the first day. Maybe I drag it across like this. That looks pretty sweet. Can you change the color of the pages? Let's see. Let's see if it gives you that option. Spine. I'm not sure, I'm not seeing pages in here, but you could go in and hand select and paint. I will be doing this challenge today, awesome Ashi. Okay, from here, I'm just going to save as, let's get this up on Behance. Super easy. Make sure it's a JPEG, Dante book. And the last couple of days, I've also been showing you the export as option. Export, you could do quick export for PNG. That'll just boom, do it, make all the decisions for you. Or you can choose export as and make a couple more decisions yourself. Like what format is it gonna be in? PNG, JPEG, the width, etc. So let's do JPEG. Let's make this a little bit smaller because we don't want our Behance project to be super wide. I'm just gonna do a thousand and let the height catch up to that. Export. You like the pages that are different colors? That would be cool, Aria. It'd be even cool if the pages were their own gradient. The default PS gradients are so ugly, it hurts to look at them. I know, they're, they're kind of funny. I never usually use the, the default ones. All right, day three, Dante book live. Save it there. Let's get this up onto Behance. So if you're just making your Behance project for the first time, you're just gonna log in with your Adobe ID and click create project up here. Since we already have our project going and I'm logged in, when I hover over my project, I see this cog icon. I'm gonna click edit, jump on in there. <laughs> You're way too busy for the daily creative challenges now. Day job and night freelance job. That's awesome, Eric. I'm glad that you're busy with uh, freelance work too. All right, we have these first two days. Let's upload our media. Jump into day three, not day four, day three. All righty. Oh, okay, Behance. Let's try that again. There we go, it's better. Awesome. I love reading and I love books and the idea of redesigning book covers is super cool to me, especially redesigning like old stories. Um, I actually looked up stories that were copyright free and royalty free and you can definitely do that. There's like Alice in Wonderland, uh, The Odyssey, all kinds of good stuff. All right, and then below we're gonna hover, click the T to add some text. Let's do day three, templates and book cover redesign. All right, now that this is all in our uh, project, let's save it here. And I'm gonna jump over to settings to remind you all, that's this third tab over here. 
that the discoverability is super important in these projects, especially during the Daily Creative Challenge, so that we can all find each other's work. If you go to discoverability and you add the keyword, PS Daily Challenge, that's gonna tag your project and put it into the larger group of all of the projects so we can take a peek at them. We're gonna start looking at a couple of the projects from the last two days, because we have a couple minutes left. And then next Friday, so not tomorrow, but next Friday, we're gonna spend a lot of time looking at projects. So make sure you get this keyword signed in. Hype, I know D. <laughs> oh, David, there's a lot of material left copyright this year. So it's, oh, it's going to leave copyright. Awesome. Anything specific, David, that you have in mind? Yeah, public domain books for days. It's awesome. All right, let's save that. Jump back to my profile, see it in its live form. Scroll on down. There it is. Super easy. All right, like I said, I'm really excited to see what you all redesigned today. Um, and I'm excited to see what your favorite books are. I think doing some redesigns of some Stephen King books would be cool. Make them real clean and graphic. It's awesome. Are you all coffee people or tea people? I'm kind of both. I got a latte today. Actually, I have both. I have tea and coffee. Just that kind of person, I guess. All right. So let's look at a couple of the challenges that you've all submitted. Can't wait. I searched daily or PS daily challenge, that's the keyword. And then I'm gonna sort it instead of by most appreciated, let's do most recent so that the newest updates will come to the top. It's actually super amazing scrolling all the way down. There are so many submissions. I'm very highly impressed. Kevin is both. Oh yeah, rooibos tea. That's hot and cold. It's, it's good both ways. Both? Toffee? <laughs> but yeah, check this out. And then as we get even further down, you'll notice that the previous daily creative challenges start to appear. We've done Photoshop before, Illustrator before. This is from a previous one, I believe. This is actually one that I wanted to look at. I think it's super cute. So this is by Bethlehem Burka. And this is the cover image, creative challenge for Photoshop. Check this out. So yesterday's work was based off of the intro um, screens of True Detective. You know how they have these beautiful overlays over each other and images double exposed on each other. So here we have a uh, True Puppers. True Detective, True Puppers. If this dog was a detective, I would, I would trust it with my life. It's amazing. Let's appreciate that. I highly recommend that you do this for each other, appreciate each other's work. This is actually some work that I was appreciating before the stream. I love just trolling Behance, checking out whatever other people are working on. Isn't this good? There's a lot of dog content that I'm into these days, I guess. All right, let's jump out of there. Maybe something else will catch my eye. These are awesome. These are mostly from day one, the cover images. This looks great. This one is by Ryan Monroe, nice. Check out the texture here. It looks like Ryan combined more than two images to create this. And it's totally cool to use stock previews. That's why these watermarks are here. Uh, if you just wanna use the preview images and not license them totally, this is just for practice. So do your thing. Oh, here, Ryan already has an update. That's awesome for day three. Um, but if you'd also like to use images from your own collection, that is totally cool too. Right, I know, I agree, fair. All right, and then there was one with a uh, Frankenstein that I wanted to look at super quick before we go. Maybe I'll find, it. I think it was by Ryan Doran, maybe? Perhaps, maybe I can't find it. I'll share it after the stream on Slack. I thought that was super cool. It looked very realistic, like a real poster. All right. Cool, so get these uploaded. I can't wait to see what you do for day three. And if you're still catching up on day one and two, no worries. Uh, you have the weekend to continue working as well. I'll be back tomorrow with another challenge. And then right after me at 9 a.m., so in about five minutes, we've got Andrew and Ari coming back for the last day of Adobe Live for Graphic Design Week, finishing up the branding of uh, his cool festival and, or awards. 
And then we've got the chutzpah design with Amy and Jen Hood working on finishing up their projects. And then Christina, who is an Adobe designer, hosted by Amelia, who also works at Adobe. So very cool. Uh, they'll be live, and then if you want your portfolio to be reviewed, make sure you stick around for that because that is what they are doing today during the streams. All right, everyone, good luck with your challenges. Come over to Slack, ask questions, hang out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.